Tony Blair's bid to become full-time president of the European Council was met with stiff opposition in Spain and Sweden, unearthed accounts show. BBC Two airs the documentary Blair and Brown, The New Labour Revolution tonight at 9pm, following the rise of the two MPs before they went on to leave the Labour Party. Tony Blair went on to win power in 1997, and was Prime Minister in Britain until 2007. He was then succeeded by Gordon Brown, who led Labour into the 2010 general election, where David Cameron's Conservative Party managed to oust Labour from number 10. Mr. Blair led a liberal, internationalist government during his time in power, and it was this that boosted his credentials for a top job in Brussels. In 2008, Mr. Blair held discussions with some of his oldest allies on how he could mount a campaign to become full-time president of the European Council, a role dubbed President of the EU at the time. He had already been supported by French President Nicolas Sarkozy, but other countries were not so keen on Mr. Blair taking a high-profile role in the EU. The Guardian reported in 2009 that Spain and Sweden opposed Mr. Blair's candidacy. Senior officials in Stockholm, which had just assumed the six-month rotating presidency of the EU, said they feared a President Blair would be a divisive figure, triggering friction between small and large European countries. José Luis Rodríguez Zapatero, the Spanish Prime Minister at the time, was even more strongly opposed to Mr. Blair securing the post and usurping Madrid's running of the Union the following year. Frederick Reinfeldt, the Swedish Prime Minister in 2009, made clear his aversion to Mr. Blair securing the post, without mentioning the former Prime Minister by name. Mr. Reinfeldt said at the time, the small countries don't want a strong leader because they fear he will be run by the big EU countries. The Swedish leader added that Europe had to decide whether the post ought to be turned into a strong leader for Europe or whether the president's role should be limited to chairing EU summits and not putting the European Commission president in the shadow. While French President Sarkozy backed Mr. Blair, it also became apparent that German Chancellor Angela Merkel opposed the former Labour leader taking on a top job in Brussels. She reportedly preferred a more limited role for the president and a weaker figure. Mr. Blair got backing from his Labour colleague Mr. Brown, who said, Britain has only one candidate for the European Council positions that are being discussed at the moment. That candidate is Tony Blair and his candidature is for the presidency of the Council. These matters will be sorted out in the next few days. Mr. Blair's affinity to Europe has made him a staunch opponent of Brexit over the last five years. He was one of the leading figures to call for a so-called people's vote in 2019. However, in January this year, he said he would have voted for Boris Johnson's Brexit deal with the EU when it was passed through Parliament. Mr. Blair said, I would have backed the leader on this. I mean, look, it's a tactical question for the Labour Party because the problem is, it's open to your opponents to say that if you don't back the deal, then you're voting for no deal.
He continued, I would have backed the leader on it. Look, there was a case for abstaining and there was a case for voting for it because the alternative's no deal. He added, I don't think it particularly matters to the Labour Party either way. I think what does matter is that we're still in a position where we're pointing out what the problems with this deal are. Separately, in a piece published by the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change, Mr. Blair argued that though he was passionately opposed to Brexit and that he had not changed his mind about its wisdom, it was now reality, and we must make the best of it. In June, Mr. Brown was more bullish, saying he would not give up the fight to reverse Brexit. He said, I want to rejoin the European Union. I'll not give up. I didn't support joining the euro because I didn't think it would work for Britain, it wasn't because I objected to a single currency. I'm not some mad integrationist that in all situations will say, integrate, integrate, integrate. But I do think our future is still European, and I do think that myself. But I recognize that's not what's going to happen in the very short term, and I also recognize that we've also got to find a better way of expressing global Britain, to persuade people of the need for international cooperation.